Wow. So the wrestling that we do for jiu-jitsu is very different from the wrestling you would do in... You can't s- slam, right? In jiu-jitsu? You can slam an ADCC. You can sl- so you could pick up and... So you can't slam just to slam, but you can slam to escape submissions. So if somebody puts you in an arm bar, you could pick them up and just... Yep, yep. Holy shit. So you'll see that a lot. Like, I don't know if you've seen, like, the buggy choke. Yes. So there was a guy... I'm who... seeing two, uh, two variations now. I'm seeing the typical buggy choke and then a reverse buggy yep. choke. Like, yep. hitting it where the... It's, like, almost going to the outside opposed to, like, where you're going over their body. Yep, so there's... There's actually there, and then there's one more that's just coming up. It's like the closed guard buggy choke. Okay. Um, that one got hit in competition like a few weeks ago, like you know, end of May. Um, so those are like kind of the but the buggy choke. Uh, there was a guy who did it at West Coast Trials, and he got slammed, and he was you know paralyzed for like 48 hours. Holy shit! It was crazy. We so uh, we competed, and we there, there was a slam, and part of the tournament stopped for like 45 minutes so they could lift this guy up and take him out of the venue. And we, you know, the rest of the tournament happened. We didn't really think much of it besides, oh, shit, this guy got slammed in a buggy choke. And then me and my buddy Jack, who I, I go, travel to a lot of the tournaments with, we saw him at lunch on Monday. We just, like, bumped into him in the street in Vegas. And he was like, yeah, I couldn't walk for, you know, two days because that was on Saturday. And he was walking on Mondays, but he was, you know, like a, a day and a half, two days. Imagine how scary walk. that would be. Terrible. Like, not knowing, like, when am I going to walk again? Or waking up thinking... Wow, two hours from now, I'm not going to be able to walk or move anything from the neck down. Yes, yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's insane. <laughs> that's insane. These but and how relevant have these buggy chokes gotten? Like literally, it seems like over this last year they've just blown up into. Yeah, it's really it's a trend. Um, I I don't know if it's going to last. Yeah, you know, it's fun. It's fun to learn. It's fun to try, but I think that it's kind of like once you know how to defend it, it gets really hard to do it. You know, yeah. Whereas like a lot of things in jujitsu, like a rear naked choke, if someone knows how to defend a rear naked choke, you can still do a rear naked choke to them, you know, because yeah. you're on the back, you're in a dominant position. The buggy choke is going, you know, it's a kind of a lower percentage attack from a very inferior position, which is bottom side control, you know, so it's yeah. lower percentage, which I think I is, saw something about like buggy control guard too, like almost yeah. like starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know saw what I mean? that. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but maybe that's going to become a it thing. It looks kind of cool when I was like, ah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of that leg now. walkers out there. It's hard because, like, you see so much of that, like, on Instagram. Like, like I learned, like, all a lot of stuff from, like, watching things on Instagram and trying them. And then, you know, I'm like, ah, that didn't work. Or, you know, that worked. Let's try it on someone who's a little bit better. And then let's try that a little bit better. You yeah. Know? And that's kind of how I learn a lot. Besides, like, watching, you know, instructionals and matches and stuff. You know, yeah. Sometimes you try things that you learn on the internet. 